But you see, capitalism in the advanced capitalist countries develops industry, develops a modern working class, and build, you know, builds the material conditions for the development of a working class. And the idea is, once it reaches a certain stage, and once capitalism reaches a, a point of crisis, the existence of this mass working class creates the basis for a socialist revolution, i.e. the abolition of capitalism and the, and, and the movement to socialism. Now, in Russia in 1917, if you look at the conditions within the borders of the Russian Empire, you didn't have advanced capitalism. You had pockets of advanced capitalism, yes. But as a, as a whole, society was, was, a, a, was, was a backward society, mainly a peasant society. In the epoch of imperialism, what happened was, on a world level, you had a few dominant, dominant countries, like Britain, like France, later on other, other countries, um, who dominated the world market. And the, 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 the English, you know, the, the, the British bourgeoisie, the American, the, the, etc., meant that in the less developed countries, you couldn't expect the same kind of development, i.e. from a small bourgeoisie gradually building up into a big one and a modern capitalist country, because they were doing it in competition with already established capitalist countries that had the capital, the technique, the power, that would not allow that development. And, and you see it. In, uh, the advanced capitalist countries colonize most of the rest of the world and dominate it. Um, in those conditions, the bourgeoisie in these countries becomes like a kind of a comprador bourgeoisie, a, cli a client bourgeoisie of the imperialists, um, and uh, often linked uh, uh, to, the, to the feudal aristocracy. And um, that meant that, that that class, which was supposed to carry out the revolution in these countries, became actually an obstacle to it. Um, Trotsky explains this. Now, um, the, among the tasks of the, of the bourgeois revolution is the, the, the land question, the abolition of feudal, feudalism, the uh, removal of the landed aristocracy, the, the land to the peasants, um, and the creation of a modern state. Um, this is uh, what we see in uh, bourgeois revolutions. Um, but the working class in Russia, as I said before, had already developed to a degree where it wasn't the semi-proletariat of, 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 of previous centuries. It, there were factories with thousands of workers, uh, the same kind of conditions that existed, say, in a factory in England or in America or in Germany, um, and the workers in these areas had a socialist consciousness as they entered into struggle from their collective uh, experience. Now, in 1905, we have what was referred to by Lenin as the dress rehearsal for the 1917 revolution. We have the, Putil the Putilov plant, which was um, a factory that made um, rolling stock and material for railways. Um, and again, that they, will, they will play a big role in 1917 as well. And this is an example of what I'm talking about. A, a factory with thousands of workers concentrated in one place. A modern I I industry. Um, they went on strike in December 1904. And it spread across St. Petersburg. And involving 80,000 uh, workers uh, on strike in the city. In January of 1905, this led to a mass demonstration. But a peaceful demonstration led by Father Gapon to deliver a petition to the Tsar. And what, what the people were asking for was some democratic concessions. They wanted a voice. They wanted democracy, which obviously for the, for the masses means obviously also an improvement in their material conditions, not just a, um, a democratic demand. Um, but they went, the idea of going to the, to, to the Tsar to, to, to petition him, and the response they got was that the troops that were guarding the Winter Palace opened fire on the demonstration and killed about a thousand people. Um, and this, this went down in history as Bloody Sunday. Now this radically changed the consciousness of those same workers who had would, who would gone along thinking we, if we plead with the Tsar, he would listen to us and he would make a concession. Instead, they were shot at and a thousand people killed. Now that radically changes any situation. Can you imagine in Britain if you went on a rally to London and, and, and they shot 100,000 people. I think people would be rather angry. Um, it led to a, a wave of strikes and protests all over Russia. And 
people people were demanding were were, were, were demanding representation, popular representation, um, and the Tsar, under pressure of the movement that was being developed, um, he um, he conceded a kind of consultative Duma. He didn't give the people what they wanted. He gave a um, uh, uh, do a parliament with, with no real powers this led the workers to move on and they created the St. Petersburg Soviet in October 1905 and that's where the tradition started it was the workers of St. Petersburg in struggle electing in the factories, in the workplaces delegates to the St. Petersburg Soviet which became a, a, an alternative instrument of power because it was, it was a representation of the working class and in November of the same year there was an uprising in December, the army was deployed. A thousand people were killed in, in, in Moscow. The movement was defeated. April 1906, 14,000 people were executed. 75,000 were imprisoned. Now, the revolution of 1905 was drowned in blood. Now, that has to be remembered when we talk about who was fighting for democracy and uh, what would have happened or not happened and the Bolsheviks did this and did that. This is the real situation. This is the real face of Tsarism. This is how it behaved uh, towards the masses. And 1905 went down as, a, as a, an important lesson for the workers of, uh, of Russia. Um, in February 1917, I'm, I'm, leap, I can't, I'm not giving a detailed history of Russia here, um, there was a spontaneous movement of the masses, which led to the setting up eventually of the provisional government. It was a concession um, of, of a provisional uh, parliamentary government made up mainly of liberals and uh, other uh, and, and several socialist currents like the Mensheviks and others with the Bolsheviks staying in opposition the peasants uh, the, 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 the conditions of the peasants was worsening there was the threat of famine the conditions of the working class in the cities uh, was worsening with massive uh, sackings and unemployment mass unemployment the war had exacerbated the situation 1,700,000 Russian soldiers had died in the war. Most of them peasants. So you can imagine the conditions the peasants were in. Their sons were dying in the war, and, they were getting, and their, their actual material conditions were worsening. Millions further were, were injured. There was mutinies starting in the army. Um, 140,000 desertions in just one year. Um, and in February, all this brought together led to a, a new wave of strikes and demonstrations. And again, the Putilov plant in St. Petersburg, which even in 1900 had close to 13,000 workers and had grown even bigger uh, since then, um, they uh, came out on, on strike and then it spread. And there was a strike movement, uh, protests uh, for bread. Almost every factory in, in Petrograd was, uh, was on strike by the, uh, by, by the end of February. Um, days of rioting, people being killed um, but something of key importance happened in February the army was sent in to crush the revolt what happened was that the, uh, people were killed, yes, but the soldiers in the face of the mass movement started to go over to the revolution to the, to the people, the, the soldiers turned against their officers who were ordering them to shoot at the people and whole regiments uh, 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 moved over to support the people. The army turned its guns on the police, and then the police was affected, and the police also uh, went over uh, to the protesting uh, uh, people. What was happening here was the armed bodies of men that Engels referred to in, in, in his description of the state were beginning to think, who do we serve? Are we here to kill our own people or to defend our people? The people are protesting. Why? They're protesting for peace. They were soldiers. Many of them had been killed. And... Um, the, uh, this, this was the basis of the, the, the beginning of, of, of um, the revolution.